Welcome to a new video about power electronics. In this example, we'll continue with the buck converter where we'll see now a different conduction mount, which is the discontinuous conduction mount. So we'll see that step by step in our calculations and also verify this in MATLAB simulating simulations. Okay, well, this is the exact same circuit as we have seen in the previous examples about the buck converter. The only change here is the inductor value, which is in this case 150 microhenries. And we will see what the effect is of this change in the inductor value. Again, the same question. So average output voltage, average output current, and also the maximum and the minimum inductor current here. So let's see the solutions first, the calculations. Now, before we move on, we need to check the conduction mode. So it could be a continuous mode or discontinuous mode. The continuous mode means that the inductor current is always above zero, so it's always positive. And a discontinuous mode, that means that the inductor current can be zero and that means then it's forced to stay at zero and then goes to some positive value we'll see that also in the graphs shortly but let's check first the conduction mode and see that step by step in order to check that we need to look at the l minimum so the minimum value we need in this circuit for our inductor that is given by this expression you see here a duty cycle per resistor the free switching frequency now, when you substitute the values we have given here, we get now 250 microhenry. And this is now the minimum value you need in this circuit for your inductor to able to stay in the continuous current mode. Now, since our L, which is 150 microhenry, is smaller than 250 microhenry, the inductor current is discontinuous. So we, start, we will be then in the discontinuous current mode. Okay, that means actually the following. You see here the plot for the VL, which is our voltage across the inductor, and the IL current through the inductor. You see here the current, let's start with that one, it's increasing as we have seen also before and then decreasing. At some point it stops and then it will be zero. So that is now the discontinuous action and it is from zero to the period and then it repeats itself in the same fashion. The similar case is happening also with the inductor voltage, you see here the, again the positive value of the inductor voltage and then drops to the negative value and then it comes back to a zero value and then stays from this to the final point of the period and stays zero. So this is a part which is definitely different than the continuous current mode operation. So we need to also see that in more detail later. Inductor voltage is set before and the inductor current. Now we need to use the volt second balance of the inductor and we can write now here using this red graph uh, equation, which is then given by this. What's actually shown is the following. The Vs minus the Vo times the this duty cycle times the uh, period, it's actually shown here, minus this part, which is then D1 times D. So this is just part here, the part of the period. And then times the Vo, because it's minus Vo, must add up to zero. That is the volt second balance if you do the integration over the voltage. Now, when you rewrite this, you can write it like so. You can divide out a T, and now you can make an expression for the VO. What you see is that there is also this D1 here, next to that D, which is our duty cycle. So we need to determine also this D1. Next, we need to calculate this D1. That can be done using this formula. This can be determined using the circuit analysis in this uh, circuit. Now, D1 is related to that duty cycle, the inductor value, the switching frequency, the load resistor R. And when you know, substitute everything we have in this circuit, which is in 0 0.6 squared, 150 micro, 20 kilohertz for a switching frequency, and also this 25 ohm for our resistor, you end up to 0 0.2745. So this part is then 27.45% of the total period in this case. Okay, now. Let's now calculate the average output voltage. That means using this formula. We have now everything. We know also the D1, that it will now end up to 27.45 volts. Before we had here 24 volts in this con uh, continuous current mode. So we have now increased that by having this in the discontinuous current mode. So that is actually the uh, remarkable change in this case. Now let's also go to the output current. In this case, we can just use Ohm's law straightforward. So VO over R, we know the VO from equation A that will give us also larger current that will be then 1.098 amps. 
The maximum and the minimum inductor current is now also important to consider. If you now look at this graph, you can see that the minimum is actually zero and the maximum is also the peak peak current of your inductor. So the peak peak current of the inductor is given by this expression. Now we now substitute the value of the 40 over the Vs and also we have determined for our output voltage and duty cycle and also other parameters you get here 2.51 amp. But that is as said also the IL maximum. So the maximum current will be then just the peak peak inductor current 251. And the minimum inductor current is then as said just zero. Now let's all check our calculation using the simulator. First we will show here the circuit in the symbolic. You see here the VDC, our voltage source at the input, 40 volts. The switch here, which is controlled by this PWM pulse generator, has a duty cycle of 0.6. The diode here, and we have the inductor, the capacitor and the resistor. The inductor current is measured here. The resistor current here is measured, which is also the output current or the load current. We also measured the voltage cross resistor, output voltage, and also the voltage across inductor. That is all displayed here in the scope. We will sh show you that in the next slides in detail. And these are the values we just determined in summary. Okay, let's now focus on the plots here. The first one, you see here the red, the inductor current. The green one is the inductor voltage. This is the resistor or the load current. The yellow one and the light blue one is the load voltage or the resistor voltage. Now first we will focus on the label 1 and label 2 that are shown here in the box. What you see is actually for this yellow one which is our load current, in this case the label 1 gives you 1.104 amps which is close to 1.098 amps so that is perfectly fine. And for the label 2, for the light blue, the value is here 27.56 volts which is close to what we have here so also perfectly fine. So that's verified. Now we will jump to the more details. So we will zoom in. You see here again the inductor current, inductor voltage, the load, vol load current and the load voltage. So you see here more details. We just zoomed in. You see also the shape here we have described here in the inductor current. You see here it's going up and down and it has a part which is zero. That's actually shown here. You see that here clearly. Now let's first focus on the inductor voltage. You see the label 2 and label 1. Label 2 gives you the maximum. In this case it is 12.55 volts. And that can be also calculated using the values we have here. But we know that it is 40 minus 27.45. So that's actually almost that's actually exactly as we have wanted. And for the minimum it must be minus VO. That's actually shown here. And it is now in this case minus 27.6 volts, so close to what we have actually in the negative sign. So it's all checked for that part. And again, it's all here. Now, going to the next slide, which is then a zoom in part again, but then focusing on the inductor current, you see here it starts at label one and then comes up at the maximum value of label two. Interesting to see here is that the delta T, which is actually this difference is 30 microseconds that's actually shown here in this label so again inductor current in, inductor voltage load current load voltage so okay and you see also that the minimum here is almost zero minimum current so this is uh, minus 1.488 times 10 to the power minus 11 so that's just almost zero amps and the maximum is 2.5 amps so maybe very close to what we have calculated so just a small error here so 2.51 we had so it is now 2.5 okay Next slide will be the, will show you then another other part in the zoom diversion of the inductor current. You see label one here and label two. Now that part is here given as a difference of 13.725 microseconds. Again, duty cycle can be then calculated for that part. D1 is then this seconds divided by the period, which is then one over the switching frequency is 0 0.2745 so again as we have calculated for our d1 and what you again see is that it's going from the maximum to the almost zero value for the inductor current okay the next plot is then showing this part which is then the dead zone actually from this all the way to the final point of the period let's now focus on the others which is the peak peak 
output voltage here. In this case, you see that in the plot here, uh, peak peak load voltage in this case is larger than before. We had three millivolts, so in this case we have almost 171 millivolts. So that's a part maybe we need to consider. We of course increase the output voltage, we also have increased our peak peak load voltage in this case. All right, this was our example concerning the buck converter in the discontinuous current mode. We have seen how we can calculate the required parameters using this extra part of the duty cycle and also how we can use this discontinuous current mode calculations in this example. I also checked our values using the simulations in Simulink. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video.